Use async data and use fetch are some of the most powerful composables in Nuxt, but I've been seeing people misuse or misunderstand them. So let's start off with a little quiz to see if you're one of them. Let's say we're using use fetch to load data for a page. This data is important for SEO, so we want it on the initial load during SSR. Would we just want to say await use fetch, await use fetch with lazy equals true, or these two options but without the awaits? I hate to do it to you, but it's a trick question, and all four of these will work to get that data inside of our initial HTML. When I first saw this, I was lost. If these all work, what does this await do? I did a deep dive on the code so you don't have to. So let's take a look at what these two composables actually do. First things first, since use fetch actually uses use async data under the hood, this is where the real magic is happening. So let's create a page that uses use async data and fetch to load posts from the JSON placeholder API. We can just render them out in a list. And I usually wouldn't do this, but just to prove a point, I'm not using await here. If we load this in our browser and refresh the page, all that data is there on the initial load. And even if we go to our dev tools and look at the doc that's being loaded, we can see these elements in that initial HTML. Let's run through what's actually happening. The key thing inside use async data is an internal function. This is used on our initial fetch, but is also exposed as end developers as refresh or execute. This function handles things like caching, but more importantly, it creates a promise that wraps around the handler that we pass to use async data. And this promise handles a lot of the heavy lifting. It sets the data once the handler is resolved, takes care of error handling, and also sets the status and pending of our asynchronous call. And once this promise is created, the function stores it and returns it. As long as we don't pass server false or immediate false, the initial fetch will run. And the most important part during SSR is that when this function runs, the promise it returns will get passed to views on server prefetch lifecycle hook. And this lifecycle hook waits for a promise to be resolved before rendering the component. This is why that data is there, whether or not we await use async data. Because no matter what, on server prefetch will wait for that promise to be resolved. So now you might be wondering when we do say await use async data, what promise are we actually awaiting? Well, remember how I said that refresh slash execute slash initial fetch function stores that promise somewhere? Well, use async data returns promise.resolve on that stored promise and then returns an object with all those properties we need, like data, pending, refresh, status, and more. So during SSR, we can wait on that same promise that's passed to our on server prefetch hook. So while this await isn't necessary for your component to wait for some data, it does make an impact after that. And this is where we get to the other half of the use async data magic. What happens on the client? Use async data runs on the client in two different occasions. During hydration, when our component JavaScript has to run, and then when we load a new component that has use async data. For example, when we navigate to a different page. And under the hood, this single composable handles these cases very well. During hydration, if we just got the data on the server, we can avoid an extra request and not make an additional fetch call. But if this is all happening on the client, like with client-side navigation, we have two options. We can lazily fetch or not. Let's take a look at the difference. For this example, I made a page that uses use fetch on a server endpoint. This endpoint waits for three seconds and then returns a random number. And right now there's no lazy fetching. So if we start on another page and then navigate to our page with a use fetch, it'll be three seconds before that navigation actually happens. So what's going on here? When we navigate to our page, our use fetch and use async data runs, and we'll immediately call that initial fetch function. As we know, this creates a promise that waits on our server endpoint, and this promise is basically what's returned by our use async data. So when we call await here, we gotta wait for that fetch on our server endpoint to finish. But now let's see what happens when we tell this to lazy fetch by setting lazy to true. If we're initially loading this page, that data is there on the first load because of all that stuff we talked about earlier. But if we start on another page and navigate, the navigation will happen instantly, and then the data will load in. We can improve the user experience by rendering some sort of placeholder while this call is pending. And I think that this is a better experience than straight up blocking navigation. Now how does this work under the hood? When we set lazy to true, next we'll defer our initial fetch function and have it run during the on before mount lifecycle hook. Because our initial fetch doesn't run right away, when it's time to return something, there's no stored promise to wait on. So even if we say await use fetch, it doesn't have to wait for our fetch call, meaning our component resolves quicker and our navigation isn't blocked. And I think this is the best way to work with use fetch and use async data. The data will be there on the initial load and client side navigation will feel snappy and have nice placeholders. And even though client side this await doesn't do much since it is lazily fetched, I like having it for consistency, so I don't forget to put it there if I remove lazy. And also during SSR, it means that after this code executes, data will have a value. So here's the decision tree of options. First is, do you need that data in your initial HTML? If you don't, then the question is, do you need the data to load immediately on the client? If the answer is no, you can set immediate to false and then use the execute or refresh handler to manually call that initial fetch function. 
but if you want that data right away, but not from the server, you can set server to false. And as soon as the async data runs on the browser, that initial fetch will happen. On the other side of the tree, if you do want it in your initial HTML, the question is, do you want your client side navigation to be blocked or not? If you don't, you can set lazy to true, like we saw earlier, but if you're okay with it, then you can just use the default configuration for use fetch and use async data. And of these four options, these two will block client side navigation and these two don't, but you'll have to handle the pending state. So while use fetch and use async data are super powerful, they have some details that can make them a little bit confusing. I hope this video helped explain some of the inner workings of Nux so you can make better choices on your projects. Like and subscribe and thanks for watching.